Okay, so I'm making a short video on how to study for comp if you have two weeks. Sorry I'm making this video and I realized that um, I'll have to make another one for comp in general because I was trying to put tips and things. You can't really, um, if you're trying to pass comp on the first time in those two weeks that they give you for Ross, or I actually had three, I actually had four, but I, I just did, did strange things the first week. And um, I realized that if you only have those two weeks, you need to study a lot differently than you would if you're sort of um, having the whole month that you get if you don't pass comp the first time. So this is my two week rundown if you want to try to pass the first two weeks of the first attempt at comp, not for regular. So this is very, this is very guttural, very like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm glucagon. I'm just pulling from wherever I can get, you know, it's, it's very bare bones. But anyway, sorry, let's get some. Okay, so I had to move. I'm going to go inside in a minute. I hope y'all can hear me. Um, anyway, so in general, Go over your MBME week topics during your practice MBME exam and then uh, do them, answer some questions in tutor mode to really like learn and understand what, like get a better foundation of what you're doing. Um, you clearly don't know what you're doing. Like if you got those wrong, like, you know what I mean? Those are ones you, you, you don't have that. You don't have that. You know, you, you know, you're bad. Okay. So go over those. Let's see tutor mode and that's just for like the like th three days like say you got like you know renal say it was renal cardio and behavior or whatever so you're just going over those for um, the first like three days okay um, then I think there's basically three things that you need to come in with after you've done that your first two or three days going over your week topics make sure you review the first and second semester stuff hard so biochem, anatomy, embryology. What you can do for this is, um, and the reason why I say that is because they're gonna literally ask, what does RNA polymerase two do? And what artery is injured if I have a peptic ulcer, uh, the lesser curvature of the stomach, I think that's what I was saying. Say um, biochem's not that important, but it's important because you haven't studied it in a while. So please don't be feeling yourself and be like, oh, I know that, like I go over it all the time. And no, you don't know it because you haven't learned it in a long time and they're pretty specific about things. So read first aid or um, the uh, DIT review for biochem is really good. Uh, and I also like the anatomy review for Boards and Beyond. So I'll talk about resources in another, my video for like general comp study, but um, just listen to everything I'm saying and, you know, take it, be for real. Okay, then that's your first thing, review first and second, uh, an anatomy, embryology, physio, biochem. Secondly, you can do a pass again through, do whatever you like to do for a pa uh, path. So some of path you're not so gonna get to. Do a pass through pathoma, and um, I would do pathoma or if you have something else that you like um, neuro, like you just did neuro in uh, fourth semester. So I don't even know. If, I, mean, I don't even know if I went over neuro like that. Um, the one what I did bad on for the final, yes, I did go over uh, pathoma. Like I did for the like, two days before my exam, like I did just pathoma, just just because I knew yeah, I didn't just know. a side note and I'll talk about more about it later um I, I really like sketchy path it's really people people really like it for neural cardio for sure and if there's something that you really keep getting wrong you've learned it and stuff like that do I mean do you know get into it like why so the third thing is that you need to do 120 questions per day so this is for and again this is for if you want to get it pass in two weeks like you want to do that two week thing so 120 questions per day that's three blocks of 40 questions per day and you could split it up like 40 40 go over them 40 go over them um or you could do just do all of them and then go over them. when you go over your questions for to go over the right and wrong answers and each answer choice um you could take notes i just had like these papers where i would write the things I was getting wrong down on what, like these different stuff I didn't know and understand. Again, I'm talking, this is for your two week blitz if you want to pass the first time. Uh, and so I have to keep that in mind and you keep that in mind as well. And anyway, yeah, that that's it. Those three things, first and second semester stuff, um, 
Pathoma or whatever path review of the big systems and 120 questions per day. Now, just making sure to review the questions thoroughly. I am a little slower at reviewing, so it would blend into the next day. Like I might not get it all done that day. So it would, all my days are just meshed together, but it was basically like review stuff I didn't, review some topics, 120 questions, review topics, 120, and I might do like a, um, some little things I like to do, like, I don't know, um, flashcards or how to do questions in general, like how to do practice questions because I feel like nobody really breaks this down. And how I kind of learned is from a podcast called um, ITB, Inside the Boards, a podcast. That is what really helped me a lot. But I'm just going to tell you how I do each individual question. Ross doesn't really prepare us to answer these types of questions, as you may know by now. Basically, um, for each question, you're going to read the question stem first. That is meaning the last line of the vignette. I actually physically cover up my answer choices. I was actually told 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 this by a CTL person. Um, you could use the on View World. You can use the calculator feature and just move it over. But the but uh, on the real test you can't do that. So I actually use my scratch the paper and I just actually cover up my answer choices. If you want, and this is and it's the type of person you are. Again, if you want, you can glance at the answer choices if you would like, but you know cover them up then you read the vignette and you start to figure out you're gonna dump them in a category as you're starting to see who this patient is am i in cardio world am i um, determining who walked in the door is this a is this short, shortness of breath because they have a pulmonary problem or a cardiac problem or um is this a micro question is this a farm question and i already know what world i'm in I already know what kind of answer I'm looking for because I've read the um, question and because I know if it's a diagnosis, I know if I'm looking for the best treatment or whatever. The reason why you cover the answer source choices is so that it doesn't influence your feelings, your diagnosis, because you have to move along and you don't want to be sitting there trying to advocate for something that's not real. Like you already knew it and the other answer choices can sway you one way or another, one way or another. Then you want to rule out answers, not rule in answers. So that means that I want to look at my vignette and say, what can I find to make this answer choice? What about what in the vignette makes this answer choice not okay? And if you find anything, cross it out, boo boo bye. Stop trying to take up for people. And, well, you know, uh, he had a mm -mm, no, no, he's out. So like, well, sometimes no, cross it out. And also, what my, you're, you're stuck in the answer choice. Always pick the epidemiology, the most common cause, and that actually has come in handy. And he just said, if you don't, this is the most common cause of um, the disease. So always do that. Uh, so when you're doing another tip is when you're doing practice questions if less than 50 percent of the people got the answer right or um they'll show you the percentage of pe uh, people who answered the question correctly don't worry about going in onto a whole goose chase about you know going through it just read the explanation and like move along because it's it's just not high yield and again for your two-week run through this is not the time to be trying to be getting your phd in these subjects Real quick, make sure you do a practice MBME, purchase a practice MBME exam from the MBME, MBME website before you take your test. Probably, preferably for five a week or four to five days at a minimum before your test. This will show you where you're at and you can calculate your MBME score just by taking the number of answers you got correct divided by 200 because the MBME is uh, 50 questions, four blocks of 50 questions. and then MBME, yes, MBME, the practice MBMEs are comparable to comp. So that's the best, and that's also what I've been read online that it's the best uh, teller of your step one score. Um, and I think the the passing grade for Ross is 70, and um, that gives you like a 196 or something on step one or something. It's like barely passing step one. So know that like, Remember, keep in mind that you've got a long way to go, even after comp, but this is just so you can get, hey, I know stuff. Like, you can't know everything before comp, and I've read that in places as well, so that's not just me just trying to... Two yeah. last things I want to say, when you go to take your MBME, your practice, your, um, your 
scratch the paper is a like laminated grid dry erase thing you get two like jacked up dry erase black that's how i experienced it so i did not know that i was like what the okay like so uh make sure you know that going in that was and and then just in general like it's it's really not really enough time it's not enough time to know everything and most people don't pass on the first attempt but i think you can hopefully you know i i haven't i was within one point of passing so maybe if you do this what i'm telling you then you can do it and just a point to add about the test tackling the questions like the test taking strategy i talked about so you're trying to work in step one is working your working memory and you're not ever i have an average working memory and a lot of us do um some people the people who are able to pass you know just like that they probably have a really good working memory so they can remember things from the, the vignette very well in order to quickly roll out roll in the, the, the diseases so what i'm doing by the suggestions that i'm telling you is that i'm trying to not change your working memory but block out unnecessary distractors that, so that you don't have to your mind only has to ping on to you know four or five things whereas some people may be more naturally better at blocking those things out so that's okay there are other there are lots of great ways that people, types of thinkers so uh it just means it's just a way everyone has a different way of thinking and that's totally fine but the mbme only really kind of lends itself or the the standardized tests in general only lend it lend themselves to people who have that really robust working memory but you know what we're gonna we don't care we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway we're gonna make it happen okay so i have a lot of other tips for in general setting for a step and comp and but this is if you want to just really get in there and um blitz it through those uh two weeks and to pass on that first attempt let me know if this is helpful i know that people always say that but like i really want to know because like i've never really done a video like this so i'm not going to keep doing them like they're not really helpful but i know i get a lot of questions